Hi everyone, I'm Sana and I'm the Quality by Design Scientist and Client Services Specialist at QBD Vision. And today I'm going to talk to you about QBD principles and how closely these align with the ICH guidelines. So Quality by Design is more than designer experiments. I often hear QBD being mistaken for DOE and this is a huge misconception because design of experiments is just one part of the entire workflow. QBD is much broader and it's broken down into phases as shown on the screen and what phase you do your DOE in is particularly important. Quality by Design was designed to help you manage your process development as required by ICHQ8 as Gustavo touched on where you should start with the end in mind and build process understanding and process control as you execute your development activities. And this is something that obviously can't be done with um, design of experiments alone. So once you've decided on your API um, and you've gained some product understanding um, through these milestones, you can select your process and also begin designing it as well as build quality into it in parallel rather than at the end of the line, which is quality by testing. And this is where DOE comes into it, into the picture. And so to summarize, DOE is an element of your QED strategy, but not the only part of it. Next, so quality by design, the quality by design workflow is an enabler of Pharma 4.0. So I've provided a bigger picture of where DOE sits, but what about the big picture of where QED sits? So the QBD phases that I'm going through align with the Pharma 4.0 initiative. The Pharma 4.0 initiative was defined and driven by the ISPE. And by using the QBD and ICH guidelines, the QBD principles and the ICH guidelines, along with the Pharma 4 enablers, um, your pharmaceutical company um, or organization will be well on its way to achieving the goals that were set out in Pharma 4.0, and we'll touch on those later. QBD is actually based on ICH guidelines from QA onwards and underpinned by ICH Q9 throughout. So by following this systematic workflow, you're also following the Pharma 4.0 principles. The ICH guidelines provide the principles of holistic QBD and guidance around QBD milestones in terms of the structure and content and I'll touch on that now. So the first question is, how do you start off with gaining your product and process understanding, essentially the first few stages of the QBD workflow? And the answer to this is by beginning with the end in mind. Um, the key here during these stages is intended performance. QA actually says that the development section should describe the knowledge that establishes that the type of dosage form selected and the formulation proposed are suitable for the intended use. And for us to know that information, we have to start with the patient in mind. And this is done with the creation or the revisit to a target product profile, or otherwise known as the product monograph. Q8 then further highlights the need for a manufacturing process to consistently deliver the intended performance of the product. So once your patient targets have been identified, quality targets to meet these must also be identified. The output of all of these milestones on the screen should be a solid product and process understanding. And then this understanding and all of the information and the data gathered around it is your knowledge space, which is the foundation for your operational design space. But before we move on to the operational design space, I'm going to explain the initial milestones in the understanding and development phases a little bit further. So, the next question is, how do you start off with the patient in mind and subsequently arrange quality into your process? And the tools for this are the TPP or the product monograph and the QTPP, the quality target product profile. The TPP is particularly important as you need to know product specifications to choose a process. And this approach then highlights the importance of starting with the patient in mind as it allows you to address those quality, safety, and efficacy issues earlier on. So the deriving QTPP from the TPP is your product quality checklist or document. Um, so essentially here are all of the things in your product that will impact this particular patient attribute. For generics, the TPP or product monograph is known. And so the 
QTPP is built to meet it and provide you with CQAs as your output. Now let's move on to what underpins all of this, which is risk. So you'll remember at the beginning that I mentioned that risk assessments are integrated throughout all of the QBD phases, as a risk-based approach is essentially a QBD approach. Risk is something that ICHQ9 dictates throughout the product life cycle. And risk assessments following the QBD milestones that I showed allow for a systematic way of working as it encourages timely risk assessments coupled with the DOE executions I touched on. The key here though is defining your risk management plan and ICHQ9 again outlines a workflow for this that starts off with risk definition and identification all the way through to risk control. A well-defined risk management plan should tie back to the previously mentioned CQAs that you derived from your QTPP, meaning the information from both process risk assessments during the understanding and development phase can be used to control and optimize the process. At this stage, it's also really important to keep in mind that the right risk assessment and management tools can really streamline this process. For example, is the risk above an acceptable level and are new risks being introduced as a result of the identified risks being controlled. ICHQ9 again encourages you to ask questions like this during your risk review and mitigation exercises. And so having the right tool to document, monitor and track all of this information that can then quickly go into your regulatory submission reports is particularly useful, especially when it's something that's done throughout the product lifecycle. So, once you're done with the initial risk assessment and the, your manufacturing process has been developed and optimized to meet the QTPP, you will have a solid understanding of your process in terms of your process parameters, um, your performance indicators, the established conditions, as Gustavo mentioned, um, as per ICHQ12. So the visualization of this process definition is particularly important as it should allow you to gain insight and see internally into your process so that you can easily show regulators what inputs affect which outputs and which, which ones of those are then critical. On the other hand, um, a lack of understanding of your process can lead to the creation of a control strategy that can't keep your system within its limits. In the pharma industry, it's quite common for process validation or process transfer to not work because, because of things like that. And that's why a methodological approach to achieving the QBD milestones is important to get to this stage of your process control and improvement. So ICHQ12 actually mandates that you have post-approval change management protocols in place. And to do this, you need to know why, for example, one of your variables is critical. And this will be a challenging activity if you don't have any insight into your process. Um, this is also where the use of tools again, such as the knowledge graph um, on the screen, which is a risk map and allows you to see the story of your attribute, parameter or requirement in terms of the cause and effect. So, for example, what will this particular attribute or parameter impact upstream and downstream? Could it be the supplier of the material? Answers to these questions require multiple stakeholders and then a deep mining of the project information. As well as that, effective change management requires an insight into the iterative nature of the process. And this is because as your process involves your unit operations and formulation development is increasing in complexity and therefore your risks are increasing. A lot of companies understand the importance of risk mitigation and control, but they tend to forget that this is something that should be brought in at the earliest possible stage, if not the idea or concept stage. One common and costly mistake is to begin employing quality by design tools once the output has failed due to unforeseen risks. This is a very retroactive approach and is generally quite costly in terms of time and money. A quality by design approach should ideally provide operational flexibility even behind the curtain whilst keeping your system within its predefined limits. And so the ICH guidelines, the QBD workflow that I just went, went through, and digital maturity all come together to enable Pharma 4.0. 
at the start, I mentioned Pharma 4.0 goals. And the key piece to remember here is that the things on the bottom here in the green box are the new and enhanced enablers that focus on digitization for knowledge management and QRM activities. Everything on the upper left is the traditional way. Um, and quality by design is a systematic process with well-defined stages that need R&D teams to have on-time access to the knowledge that's being generated through each of these phases. And digital maturity is a key part of this. So to conclude, Qualified Design is a holistic approach to product lifecycle management and an enabler for the Pharma 4.0 initiative. The principles are described throughout the ICH guidelines that I highlighted, and these bring the concepts of process inputs and outputs, risk management and quality attributes together. As well as that, doing these activities generates product and process understanding, which catalyzes your journey to a robust control strategy in line with the FDA's process validation guidance. And then finally, although the Brazilian market is geared to generic drugs, following these ICH guidelines, along with what Gustavo mentioned, will yield better quality at lower total cost. And that's it. So hopefully you've seen that QBD is a simple and effective enabler of Pharma 4.0 and a powerful tool to help you along in your journey. Thank you.